Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy with another special guest on my gratitude interview podcast, podcast interview, I should say, regarding the pandemic. And today I have a young lady. Most people are younger than me anyway. So it's a young lady that I met. Gosh, what's it been? Five or six years ago? I think so. Something like that. Dawn Marie Williams. She's one of those that requires and, and deserves three names, Dawn Marie Williams. But uh, Dawn, welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you so much. You bet. You bet. It's good to have you here. And what I've done is I've explained to a lot of people that I'm just really reaching out to people that I know that I admire and that uh, people that work hard and have a lot of uh, a lot on the ball, if you will, and kind of seeing how this has affected them. So my first question for you is, what has been your best coping mechanism to deal with this pandemic? We're six, I think we're in our seventh or eighth week now, but what's been the thing that's helped you the most to kind of deal with all this? You know, first I would just have to say simply continuing to exercise, really just mm -hmm. taking those steps back. You know, maybe unlike some people, I am still working longer hours than I had been before. So just staying active, um, being very open and communicating, especially with my son who's 18 years old. You know, this is his senior year in high school. He's missing out on all that good stuff. So just being able to have open conversations with him and yeah, exercising. Yeah, that's, that's, and I've heard that too, and that is, that is really good too. And you know me, and, and you and I have worked together before, and of course, it's that gratitude guy, and gratitude's kind of my middle name. Yeah. Have you noticed what you were grateful for before this happened? Has it changed since we've gotten into this pandemic, or is it kind of the same things you're still grateful for every day? Some remain exactly the same. Um, what I will tell you is I'm very yeah. grateful for the opportunities I had say five years ago um, in my previous work, I'm able to bring those skills, the knowledge, and you know, just all the work that I did back then to my current work today. So mm -hmm. I'm so, so grateful what I learned in, in military service has now really, really helped me in, in, in the work I'm doing today. So super grateful for that, very Excellent. grateful for that, yeah. As you notice, you're somebody, I, I think I know you relatively well, and you have a lot going on and a lot of things you're dealing with. You mentioned your son, and changing jobs a few years back and so forth. But any thoughts or ideas, tips, whatever you might add to somebody to tell them what they might be able to do while they're kind of stuck at home or their apartment or their condo or they're kind of housebound, any, uh, any thoughts that might be helpful to them? You know, I would say just be aware of your surroundings. I mean, there are uh, a lot of community um, online <laughs> Facebook groups that you can get in, involved in. I live in a very, very small town. And one of the first things they did is they just said, hey, anybody who needs help, you know, reach out, let us know what you need. Um, I think that that's, that's just a great way to reach out and be part of the community. I kind of look at it like be part of the solution, not the problem. We hear a lot of negative things True. in this type of, you know, time that if we can do something positive, it really helps everybody just get over the hump here. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. That's a great point too. And as you think again, with somebody who has a lot going on and so on, is there anything that you think that during this time, as I say, we're on our seventh or eighth week, I think something like that. So kind of approaching two months, is there anything you've thought during this time that boy, when this is over and whether it's a vaccine or we get start to go back into the economy, that kind of thing to kind of hit the ground running. Is there anything you've thought about now that you think, boy, when this thing's kind of done, I'm going to do this or do something differently at all. Wow. That's a great question. I think I would have to say, as soon as this is over, um, it's really, really important for me to kind of do a check on learning. You know, mm. how did this, how did this process work? What could we have done better? Because I ultimately think that we can use the lessons learned, you know, through this whole process for, for future incidences, whether it be natural disasters or another pandemic of some sort. So hit the ground running most definitely would be to kind of do an after action review mm. and think about those emergency prep plans that we have. Um, do we really uh, work them? Have we read through them and updated information? That kind of sort of thing. Um, other thing I will do more on a personal level is just really to make sure that I continue to take time for myself. Oh. Um, 
I, yeah, I have to take a couple steps back. I'm a better person if I exercise, if, if, if I just take five minutes to pause and think about what I am grateful for, what I'm very thankful for. Um, yeah, so I will, I will hit the ground hard running doing that for sure. Yeah, that's interesting. I've had uh, a lot of great tips that people have come up with. Certainly exercise has been one that's been kind of a common denominator, but it's so true. I just hit about a five mile walk. It's a beautiful day out and so forth. And it just really makes a difference to get that physical, mental connection kind of going and, and so forth. So yeah, very, very true. So, so Don Marie, last question. Do you have, whether it was this in this pandemic or before, sort of a quote or a mantra or a sort of a saying or anything that kind of is what sustains you through good and bad times. I know some people have said this too shall pass and that kind of thing, but is there anything that you kind of think you use to kind of fall back on, especially during a tough time like this, it kind of uh, keeps propelling you forward? Yeah, I would have to, um, wow. <laughs> My high school teacher, way, way back in the day, right? <laughs> um, he was a human anatomy and physiology professor, teacher. And he used to stand up in front of the class every day and he would uh, read a quote that said, um, I hope I get this right, but today is a day like all days filled with events that will alter and illuminate our lives and we are there. Um, I'm sure it came from somebody and I'm so sorry that I don't know who it came from. Um, but I have thought about that quite a bit, not only just during this pandemic, but, but when things get a little harder, I feel like I'm struggling a little bit. I just think about that. Yeah. But I'm here, I'm present in the moment, do the best I can. Um, tomorrow will be different. Um, it could alter or it could illuminate, you know, my life that I'm currently living in. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I would have to say that. That's good. That's good. I like that. And of course, to me, the whole concept, people have mentioned meditation as an example. One of the things that keeps you present. And, you know, we have yesterday is gone. Tomorrow isn't here yet. All we really have is today. So that's a good quote. I really like that. And it's just so important to be present. And I was, somebody mentioned something the other day about doing things. And they said this whole multitasking thing is, is really kind of not true. That really our brains can really only focus on one thing at a time. So nothing like focusing on today versus what are we going to do tomorrow? Why don't we not worry about that till it gets here? Let's be present today. So, well, not surprising, some good tidbits, just as I thought from uh, <laughs> Captain Don Marie Williams. So Don, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. You bet.